Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode. Today we are going to look at the NPCs. So I'm gonna go ahead, load my mode, set as active, okay. Construction set is going to load my master files for me because I only have the basic ones. I get the warning, cancel. Right, I'm going to put an NPC in that basement, you know, because because that's what I want to do. Selecting my basement. There we are. Ooh, that's all very, very far. I'm going to select the object C. We're much closer. Because I'll be working in my uh, render window, I really like... This is my default setting. Obviously, you just resize the way you want. You know what? Real quick. I'm going to select that, copy, control C, and actually there's a couple of things. You can go control C to copy, control V uh, to paste it. Let me show you the shortcuts right there. Uh, control X, control C, control V, that's pretty uh, straightforward. You also have duplicate, which is nice, uh, and it's going to give you the exact same object, right? Right now I'm holding the Y key, so it's very very easy to have these two objects align and it's going to save me a lot of time brilliant you know what let's let's go crazy copy the whole thing paste i'm going to rotate that 180 degrees and put that on the other side of my room f Yes, we're nicely aligned. I want it to go in the corner, not too close to the walls, so it doesn't clip, but not too far that we don't waste some precious, precious room. Brilliant, that will do for now. We want an NPC. Let's go ahead and create an NPC, NPC tab. Right click, new. We're not modifying one, we're creating a new one, AA new NPC. A name. I don't have a name for you. You're going to be dude. You're the new dude. And we are not going to attach any script just yet. You know what? Let's keep an Argonian. I like that. We're going to make um, an escaped slave. I have selected slave. There are ways to create uh, new classes, new races, but that's something we're going to keep for much, much later. I'm going to make that Argonian level 5, so not particularly strong. Um, no, be a male. Be a male. We can decide on the skills. If you have auto-calculate, it is going to give you everything for a regular slave of level 5. If I change to level 50, the skills are changing accordingly. There we go. You might want to have a very specific character. I don't know, this Argonian is actually particularly smart, which gives him a whole lot of magicka. Um, and because uh, because that Argonian has had to hide all his life, it's actually a really really good really good at sneaking around. Right now, I have no reason to make that Argonian anything special. I'm gonna go with auto calculate stat. That's my new NPC with a different ID. Good create. He's right there. Here's our Argonian. I'm gonna place him. Oh my goodness, <laughs> we'll have a look at that. We're going to place him in the room. Unfortunately with NPCs that F button doesn't work, but NPCs and creatures, they're going to spawn in the world and they're just going to fall until they hit the floor. So you don't have to worry too much about placing the NPC exactly where it needs to be. Now you see this terrible, terrible head we have there. It's the werewolf head because it's selected. It's set in the construction set as, as an Argonian head. It really is not. 
there. So feel free to go around and choose the, the style that you like. This Argonian might be a slave, but I mean he's stark naked. We have to we have to, you know, you dress him up a bit. Open. This Argonian currently has absolutely nothing. He knows a couple of spells. They're not so much spells. This is what comes with being an Argonian. These are the, the spells and the powers you have as an Argonian. I could go to the spell making and give him a good spell or decide that he is actually really good at casting a short smithing but I have no reason to do that I just want to give him some clothes so I'm going to the clothing tab and again just like you can organize these in alphabetical order when looking for clothes I like to organize it by type that way I can go to all my trousers are there and I could go ahead and give him trousers save there he is he has common pants another way to dress your NPCs if you want to make it a little more um, a little more interesting is to go and have a look at the level lists not level creatures to 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 leveled item there it is and the level list there's a whole bunch of them already created by Bethesda this is how when you open a conberry for example you're given one of them or two of them this is how when you open a chest uh, there is sometimes 25 gold pieces and the next time there's only five and there is already a random list for clothes it already exists expensive clothes that would be for that's not what I want row pants if I go ahead and give him the leveled list random D pants he's going to have one of those pants right now if I say okay it looks like he's stark naked because those leveled items are decided when you load the game for the first time so right now I do not know which trousers he'll be wearing, but he'll be wearing one of the common clothes. Brilliant! He has a name of sorts, a face, some clothes. Let's give him a little more, shall we? Um, add animation file is not something that you need, but if you are curious and have a look at a mod like Animated Morrowind, you will see that NPCs have animation files to make them do certain movements. For now, I'm going to go and have a look at the AI. You have different packages. There's a whole bunch of them. Travel, Wander, Escort, Follow, Activate. These are relevant for companions. When an NPC starts following you, it starts using the uh, Follow package, for example. Right now there is Wander. It means that this NPC is going to alternate between these idols. There's a, a scratch your head. There's a shift your weight from one leg to the other it's just going to alternate those and move around i don't want that i want this npc to just not move so i'm just going to delete the wonder package brilliant we have a number of settings this guy i've decided is a slave as a slave uh he's rather meek he's not likely to be very aggressive he is going to flee but not very far if he sees me stealing something he's not gonna be a snitch and he's not gonna greet me really unless I talk to him or get really close to him all right that is the basic setting services this guy is a slave so he's not going to buy or sell anything he's not going to offer me any services out of curiosity we're going to look at uh, I don't know alchemist an alchemist is going to have a number of services by default. Oh, I didn't save. He is going to buy and sell ingredients, apparatus and potion. And then I can decide how much money he's got. Not interesting for my character right now. He's a slave. 
a runaway slave. Actually, Nucius was hiding that, hiding him out. There we go. He's not gonna move, he's gonna flee or fight or not. We're going to just give him a little line of greeting, just, just one. We're not gonna go into all of the dialogue options, but just a tiny bit. So I open the dialogue and I go to greetings. The way the dialogue works in Morrowind, uh, basically an NPC, when you talk to them, is going to go from the top and it's going to go, all right, can I say squeak to you? No, because I'm not a rat. Can I say squeak again, exclamation mark? No, because I'm not a rat. And it's going to go down until it finds a line that fulfills, where the, the NPC fulfills all of the conditions. Uh, are you in the faction Royal Guard? No. All kinds of things. The greetings are organized usually by uh, quest uh, for illnesses, things about clothing. <clears throat> Sorry, clothing. There's all kinds of things. We're going to give him greeting one. You might recognize this. You have failed your oath of silence. It's one of the quests you have where your NPC shouldn't speak. And we don't want to break that quest. If I put anything above, then I will be able to speak to my NPC without breaking that quest. So you want to put something below it. It's gonna be new. I don't know what I'm gonna say just yet, but I know one thing for sure. I want to make sure that my NPC is the only one who's gonna be able to say that line. Now let's think about the line. He's going to say, he's going to say, please don't kill me. That's the greeting. If I put nothing in there, it means that when I talk to an NPC and it's going to greet me, it's gonna start looking at these, can't say that, can't say that, do not fulfill the conditions, these are all the conditions right there. Then it's gonna to go to greeting one, can't say that, oh right, I can say that. And every NPC is going to say, please don't kill me. So really, really, at least, at the very least, the ID so this is the only NPC who can say don't kill me you know what let's go a little further I'm going to uh, copy this line and give a different greeting let's say that the PC belongs to the faction twin lump which is yeah, the faction that uh, frees slaves then the greeting is going to be different it's gonna say um, you found me, are you here to help? I hope you're appreciating my super fast typing. Are you here to help? Question mark. And now my NPC is going to go through all of those. No, no, conditions not fulfilled. Condition not fulfilled. You are part of the twin lump. It's going to say that. If not, it's going to go to the next one and say that. We have basic greeting, we're happy with that. We can double check that this is working fine. If you look at the properties of your NPC and open the dialogue, all of a sudden you're going to have not so many topics and not so many greetings because it's going to filter out all the lines of dialogues that do not apply to this NPC. In that case, we see that greeting zero, there was no dialogue that was suitable for that NPC and in greeting ones, we only had those. Brilliant. We now have an NPC. Save. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I see you next week. Bye bye.